bonds were very much in the spotlight this week, given what the Fed did and the reaction of the bond market. Did what the Fed say make sense to you? Mixed, I'd say. So here's the thing. What the Fed did, I think, was a smart thing to do. It validated what the market was already pricing, which was seven rate hikes this, this year. The reason I would say it's mixed is I look at the terminal rate that the Fed has, which is around 2.8, and it has inflation, core PCE, dropping with, from the four handle this year down to 2.6 next year. So you've got rates barely positive. So that part to me, not sure, not so sure it makes so, so much sense. The seven rate hikes, I mean, it was almost, I would say, a no-brainer given that the market had already priced this. It would have been crazy for them to have missed that opportunity. I do think actually they've left the door open for more than seven rate hikes this year itself. And I'm very interested, and, I'm th and then I'm going to stop, I'm very interested in the fact that the market really isn't pricing any rate hikes for all practical purposes after the Fed is done with this year and a little bit. So clearly the market is still not taking the Fed very seriously on this. Joanne, what about from the equity side of it? Yeah, you know, it was really interesting to see the dynamics this week with uh, the Fed coming in as expected, but, you know, lowering their growth forecast, for example, and delivering that anticipated plan for seven rate hikes. You know, equities said, okay, that's what we expected. We've already built in uh, these kinds of rate hikes. And moreover, uh, the Fed has just confirmed a slowing growth environment, which, you know, equity investors, I think, were expecting. And what we saw, interestingly, as you pointed out, David, at the beginning, was NASDAQ actually went up more than the S&P, uh, showing, I think, uh, the beginnings of a return to more growth-oriented, tech-oriented stocks, because in a slowing growth environment, broadly speaking, where are investors going to find growth? You're going to have to find the names that have secular drivers, and, and a lot of those are technology companies. So now you referred to the projections for where rates are going to go, given where inflation is. How is inflation mm. going to come up so come down so dramatically if we don't get to positive real rates, if real yields as a practical matter? Don't you have to have the rates above where inflation is projected to be? And is the Fed really planning for that? You know, I would just say one thing: hope is not a strategy, and I think the Fed's forecasts. All right, their projections, uh, and I think Joanne and I talked about this earlier. But you know, uh, it depends on a very rapid resumption of supply chains to some form of normalcy, because I don't think that monetary policy at this point is going to be successful in bringing core PCE, uh, let alone headline PCE, down in the time frame the Fed is envisaging with the style of rate hikes that the Fed is planning. And yes, there is a growth slowdown. It's not, it, it is a slowdown, but it is not a recession. So uh, I think that is a part of what is going on over here that, you know, we're, we're not, I think the Fed is trying to tread that line of not freaking the market out. And it probably clearly very successfully did that. But I do wonder whether in June, when we get the next set of SEP and uh, dot plots, we're going to see something different. And it's going to depend critically on what we see on inflation over the next two, three months. Yeah, what Sonal points out there, David, uh, is, is the, the wide variety of projections by the FOMC members. If you look at those dot plots, unfortunately, we can't tease them apart and look at one person's projection separate from the others. But you see this incredible range. Uh, for example, you know, some folks saying they expect the, the Fed fund rates to end the year at 3%, others 1.5%. And that tells you there are a lot of different assumptions and, and understandings of what the dynamics are this year that are going to drive inflation, growth, and rates. You know, for example, uh, a lot of folks are still thinking that the base effect is going to play through to lower inflation in the second half of the year. That is, we saw last year in the spring those big price increases, and we're going to lap those. That's going to take some of the wind out of the sails of inflation. Some people must be modeling it that way. And others are recognizing that we're in a really unusual place right now for the Fed. Job openings are enormous. Mm -hmm. the, the firms out there are really trying to hire. So the Fed is raising rates into a pretty strong economy. And it's unlikely that firms are going to turn around and say, oh, no, the Fed is raising rates. I'm, I'm not going to hire. They see that there's still an awful lot of consumer demand out there. And the consumer remains fundamentally strong with very, uh, very strong balance sheets. 
And even if fiscal support is running out for consumers, and even if some of them are really suffering from the high food and gas prices that are out there, enough of them are more comfortable and sitting on those balance sheets to sustain consumer demand. So it, it's a really tough spot for the Fed. They need to raise rates. Um, but on the other hand, the economy is, is still very strong. And so we are likely to see supply come back. And so that's why I think there's such a disparity of projections that are coming out of the FOMC as to how this is actually going to play out. And trust the Fed to, to, to say, hey, we're going to be you know, watching the data. We're going to update you know, right. as we need to as the year goes by. I, I couldn't agree more. So the, the issue of that dispersion is re very real. But they always talk about the central tendency as well. And so they are, rightly or wrongly, giving some form of forward guidance via the SEP and the dot plots. But I totally accept that because I think that, in particular, that strong labor market, uh, we are in a very different place, aren't we? You know, consumers, and it's not just a strong labor market, consumers are coming into this uh, sitting on over two trillion in savings. So even if we have that fiscal withdrawal, consumers still have savings to allow them to validate these price pressures to some extent. So yes, we expect some slowdown, but they can run down the stock of savings, certainly through the end of this year. And ironically, indeed, the higher inflation is probably going to bring back some more of those people who are out of the labor force back into the labor force. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw in the months going forward, the participation rate going up, but the, infl but the unemployment rate uh, also going up because of that participation rate change. So it isn't a sign of weakness. So, Joanne, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about, because both you and Sanal have talked about the strong labor market. And we heard Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, say it's actually unhealthy it's so strong. At the same time, if you look at those economic projections, it says basically inflation is going to be higher, rates are going to be higher, growth is going to be less, and we will not have any increased unemployment. How can that be right? Just as a matter of basic economic theory, can those numbers all be right? Well, again, as, as I think Sanal also pointed out, right, the dispersion is reduced uh, of those projections, right? It, they're looking at the central tendency, they're looking at the median. But within those projections, you can have wildly different individual forecasts that have, for example, inflation going up, growth going down, you know, with higher rates. The average happens to show unemployment not changing. But if we just step back from that, how can we imagine that? So let me put on my economist hat for a second. How can we imagine that happening where rates are going up, inflation is still high, and yet unemployment doesn't go up? And I think that that's where the situation is really different with, with the vast amount of job openings still out there, well mm -hmm. above the, the number of unemployed people. Firms are really starting to hire. And as Sanal pointed out, we could very well see a higher labor participation. We may not necessarily see a, a higher unemployment rate, even in this rising rate and high inflation environment, just because there's such a shortage. Firms are desperately trying to fill shares. And so we could continue to see that kind of strength. And that's why I think the Fed is really facing a, a really unusual yeah. challenge 